Welcome to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. And I am your host, Trisha Carr. Thank you so much for joining me this Sunday morning. We're broadcasting live from the Universal Broadcasting Studios in Sunset Gower, on Sunset Gower, in the Sunset Gower Studios. Did I say all those things? Those were a lot of words. Basically, all of those words were right. I mean, Google can figure it out, right? <laughs> we are live at 11 a.m. Pacific. It's Sunday morning. Good morning. If you've just come from church, well, hallelujah. And if you just came from brunch, cheers. And you're welcome if you just woke up as well. But... Um, I want you guys to know that there are many ways that you can catch this show. And however you do catch this show, I am so grateful for you. And when you do watch the show or when you share, like, or um, comment, you are actually contributing your light to the intention of the show, which is to help us all connect with unconditional love. So thank you and welcome. And uh, I appreciate you so much. I um, am really excited about what's happening here in this beautiful planet of ours, on this beautiful Gaia this being of of high light order and her name is Gaia and she loves us and she is she wants us to be abundant and she wants us to be well and vitalized because that's what she is so thank you for being here that is a big um, blessing to me and I send it right back to you and if you are just joining us for the first time you can also catch this in archives on YouTube uh, youtube.com slash Trisha Carr and on all kinds of podcast outlets like iTunes Stitcher Spreaker and I'm on iHeartRadio hallelujah yay yay I don't know why I'm saying how much hallelujah today I'm feeling very I'm feeling the church Jarvis <laughs> Jarvis did you go to church recently no. oh no <laughs> don't tell your mama though right <laughs> Jarvis and I both come from the church, so um, some of it sneaks in sometimes. <laughs> but only the good stuff. All right. Um, I want to tell you all about a mentoring program that I'm doing. I'm very, very excited to welcome folks into this. It's a very intense one-on-one -on -one mentoring that I do, too. One is developing your intuitive abilities so that they actually become skills that you can um, rely upon to do your your healing on this planet to help others the way that your heart is is um, just resonating for you to do. So that's one program, and the other one is um, successful spiritual entrepreneurs. So that if you do have those skills and those gifts, you know you you also get the opportunity to continue to hone those and um, develop new skills that you can um, market it because that is the system that we're in right now and wouldn't it be great if we who are um, naturally compassionate spiritual seekers wanting to usher in and allow more love on this plane to to you know, bring that raise our vibration wouldn't it be great if we also were the ones who were making the choices of with that monetary system that we have and we were actually helping others with it and we were we were the ones who were probably not going to be lobbying for chemicals to be dumped into areas that they shouldn't be dumped into because that's what happens with the people that have a lot of them all right i'm not going to i'm not being negative i'm not saying that i'm just saying that i think that we all would uh, do better to understand that we are the ones who um, can connect with abundance and wellness and freedom. Doesn't that give us all freedom? But to be able to help more people too. So you can find, if you wanted to uh, check out my mentoring programs or any of my any of the work that I do, trishacarcharm.com. All right, I think that's about it for business. And I'm really excited about today's show. I have an, a really awesome, powerful person, a guest today. His name is Patrick Hayes. He is a philosopher, poet, and a hip-hop bard, and he specializes in lifestyle transformation and overcoming addictions. Wow, what a powerful combination. I love that. And he's able to help people harness their potential and transform themselves. So let's do please welcome Patrick to the show. Patrick? Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. How's it going? Good. We have some overlap. I'll not talk over you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, doing great. Just enjoying myself. We're here in um, in Massachusetts. I hosted a retreat here a few weeks ago at my friend's property. He's got 30 acres, so I'm in this little outside, inside, outside room, as you can see in the background. Oh wow! Um, yeah, it's beautiful. We're on a pond right here, and just uh, yeah, soaking up the nature. Oh, I love it. That's actually what I want my living room to be like, like inside, outside, where the roof can just retract, and I guess I agree. have like maybe a little bit of a screen so that birds don't 
do their business on you. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's beautiful. And um, what is the weather like? Is it looks like it's pretty warm and you know it's been surprisingly cold here oh. and rainy. It's probably rained maybe sixty percent of the time, but today is beautiful. Um, it's actually nice that it hasn't been too hot because. When it gets too hot, the mosquitoes really get going. So it's mm. actually been pretty perfect on the sunny days. Oh, great. Well, and if you're listening to this in an archive, it is July. Is What is it? The 29th? 8th? It's the 29th, I think. Yeah, it's I'm so late the Gregorian July. calendar. <laughs> it's late July. Yeah. <laughs> it's when it's yeah. generally warm in the United States of America. <laughs> so, um, and by the way, so Patrick's partner, Bridget Nielsen, was on my show a couple months ago, I think it was. So is Bridget there with you as well? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. She's uh, she's off in the other room doing okay. some sort of work stuff now. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, tell I want to hear about the retreat, but let's let's let everyone know about about you. Let's talk about. Well, you want to tell us about your journey, the work that you're doing. Let let everyone know what you're up to. You kind of chop a little bit. Okay. There, um, then and now, I think I got what you were asking. Uh, journey's been a long one. Let's see, I I, uh, I started off. I've always been interested in um, or evolutionary topics. And um, always felt a, a strong draw to them. Like most kids that um, are open, you could say, I had a hard time as a child. I was um, diagnosed with different disorders and whatnot, put on medications like Adderall mm. and, uh, and Zoloft when I was younger. Wow. And um, when those prescription medications um, that were very consciousness shifting, not in a necessarily a good way, um, they led to a later um, evolution of drug use that um, I uh, went through for a good portion of my 20s. And, um, and when I started having more of my major awakenings um, towards my uh, mid and late 20s, I cleaned up and um, really started taking the health path, the spiritual path. And um, a lot of things started opening up for me. And, um, and so it's brought me kind of to this point now, I've always been a big fan of music and now I'm, you know, music is probably where my heart goes first. I love making uh, hip hop. So the hip hop bard is how I've, I've labeled it. And essentially um, what I like to do musically is, is bridge philosophical uh, truths and helpful kind of self-help philosophies with the emotional aspect that comes from music. So I can create kind of a multidimensional experience where people can feel the vibe of music, but also have something that's psychologically satisfying. I noticed when I was a child, oftentimes um, I would listen to these songs and I would have such a deep emotional uh, experience from these songs. But oftentimes the words would not really match up to the experience that I had emotionally. And um, since I grew up with, with hip hop music, I found that hip hop's a great way to really um, express myself just just by the sheer volume of words. So much more can be articulated through a hip hop song oftentimes than other songs. So it gives me the opportunity to be very philosophical and bring a lot of um, a lot of words through to explain some of these different you know, philosophies and topics and self-help techniques that I like to bring across in the music. So that's a big part of my life. Also, I, you know, host retreats around the world. Bridget and I are, you know, all over the place hosting different things. Sedona, we just did one here in, um, in Massachusetts. And uh, we do them in Hawaii every year, too, swimming with dolphins and whales. And, um, and then I'm, a, I'm an addiction counselor. So I work with people that have addictions. I help them overcome that and help them transform their lifestyle. I, basically, that's been the – I mean, I've gone from, you know, homeless drug addict to – you know, it's kind of rags to riches, not that I'm like super rich or anything, but um, Cinderella story of, of really like being at the bottom of the bottom and um, stepping into something that is I'm really a different person now. And I know what that experience is like and what that transformation takes. So um, I do my best to pay it forward and, and help anybody else that may be on the edge or the precipice of something that could be uh, very transformational for them and kind of giving them the tools to step through that and, um, and step into a new way of being. That's beautiful. Wow. Thank you for sharing your story. That's really amazing. And mm. 
Um, I mean, you are rich. We're <laughs> riches is more than just the cash, but I, the cash is good yeah. too. <laughs> the cash is good too. The cash is good too. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. I, I just I'm saying that today. It feels like there are some folks that maybe um, that that is kind of a painful subject. So um, it's okay. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky yeah. one. Yeah. It, it because it isn't really natural to us, but it's here. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it's it's somewhat natural because we created it, but at the same time, it is. It's interesting. I, I don't remember who it was, but someone was having a um, holding a conference with some, um, I think, Andromedans, um, with some ETs, basically, uh, mm-hmm. who were higher, you know, fifth dimensional, you know, more benevolent and more ascended than than the Earth plane is right now. And he was explaining to them money and monetary system, and he's like, "Why do you?" That they asked him, like, "Why would you pay to live on your own planet?" <laughs> 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 and we're like. I don't know, but that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Um, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah, the money thing's tricky. It's um, you know, it's definitely a razor's edge to walk um because there's um so much of the financial institution is based off of industry that destroys the planet or in some ways like like snake oil sales or some sort of swindling act. So, I think one of the major transition points and I talk with people about this when I'm working with them one of the major transition points for us and coming into ourselves is learning how to, uh, to find a way to really give back that supports us financially. And in the world that we live in today, you know, until we're fully sovereign Mm -hmm. and we've, you know, extracted enough resources from the system or the world as it is to create a stable environment that's self-sustaining outside of that system, Mm -hmm. we have to involve ourselves in the economic world just to survive. And so how can we put ourselves in a position where we can do something that is truly giving back and doing good for people, um, but also financially supports us and is, and can also compete with other, you know, industries or other people in the similar niche that may not have those same moral standards. And that's a tricky thing because, you know, if there's one organic food company that doesn't have moral standards and they're cutting their costs down and they're, you know, in competition with another organic company that does have high standards, I mean, how are they going to be able to compete monetarily? And this is where it really calls upon us to be innovative Mm. so that we can really bring through a higher dimensional expression of ourselves and be supported by that. That's great. Yeah. I, excuse me. I, yes, that's beautiful. And that is, that is tricky. I mean, we're talking about the food, we're talking about water even, you know, and water Mm -hmm. rights and that's, it's getting close to, I don't think they're going to be able to do it, but they've actually been trying to figure out how to somehow monetize air. (laughs) Right. Well, in China, they're even, people buy, are buying air in China because the pollution is so bad that they have to buy extra. It reminds me of that movie Spaceballs. I don't know if you ever saw that movie Spaceballs, but it was like a, it was a, it was like a joke movie based off of Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the scenes in it, one of the guys is uh, breathing Perry air and it was this canned (laughs) air that he would crack open and breathe. But I always think about that because yeah, it's like. You know, we have to walk around with a gas mask on when mm-hmm. the pollution gets bad enough. Yeah. But yeah, you know, you think they are trying to monetize there. Same thing they did with water. Exactly. Well, th- that's what's so funny about that joke is that, yeah, flashback to 100 years ago, may- not really even that long ago. Well, even 60. And it would be hilarious to think that we were just purchasing fancy water. <laughs> like, like water. buying water out of a bottle. Right? Water comes yeah. from the sky. I know. Right? <laughs> and it collects it's itself. It's, I don't understand <laughs> this. Um, yeah. Well, let, I would love to talk about your work in um, addiction counseling. Um, is there? I, I just I'm going to ask you: Did you? Did you? What about twelve step? Is that something that you embrace? Or I love I love to talk about the twelve the twelve step mm-hmm. kind of model. Where are you on that? Well, I I worked the twelve steps when I was a teenager. I went oh. to a alternative school for a little sobriety high school. I think there's only in the country. I was in one in Marin County and the 12 steps definitely has a lot of very potent um, medicine in it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not wholly opposed to the 12 steps, though there are some things as I've evolved and um, and and kind of developed more of a um, self-empowered foundation of psychology. 
um, that I'm uh, that I'm kind of opposed to for my path and for what I recommend that's associated with the 12 steps. Yeah, it's the idea of powerlessness. Um, like one of the major steps is the first step is admitting that you're powerless over, you know, either drugs or alcohol and mm -hmm. that your life has become unmanageable. And while there's some lev measure of truth to that, especially in the beginning, I think that um, overall it can be disempowering for an individual to um, to really step into themselves if um, if they're constantly operating from a frame of being powerless. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what ends up happening oftentimes in this in the 12 step communities is that people kind of swap their addiction for drugs to an addiction in a sense of 12 step, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the 12 step groups in society. And while there, again, is a lot of positive benefit in a lot of areas there, there's also a lot of unstable, um, you know, people in those environments. And it's not always best to be around a, a bunch of other unstable people when you're trying to learn how to be stable yourself. And, um, so for me, I try to encourage people um, to, to learn how to find their true empowerment as opposed to uh, live a lifestyle of being disempowered. But other than that, um, the 12 steps is actually really amazing. It's mm -hmm. um, the, the process of cleaning house, um, doing your own personal introspection, mm -hmm. healing all your past relationships, um, getting in touch with a higher power or something, um, realizing that you're connected to something greater and you can be something greater. These are all extremely powerful tools that come through the 12 steps. And I actually credit working the 12 steps and being involved in those 12 step programs, a uh, young child as being one of the catalysts that really brought me into a different way of, of navigating. Yeah, I, I agree. And I what I think is really important is to realize that it is a tool. And this is something that I teach my clients, or I just teach the people that I work with about that. Basically, everything in this um, duality experience, everything that you identify as something else is a tool. It's your soul reaching for um, enlightenment or ascension, you know, growth by identifying and partnering with something else. And so the 12 steps, I think it's like a really good religion. And I say really good mm -hmm. <laughs> compared to some other religions, mm -hmm. but it can be dogmatic if, but mm -hmm. it's all about you. Like you're responsible for making something dogmatic. You can have a lot of enlightenment in a, an organized religion mm -hmm. and you can have a lot of spiritual growth. Um, but it still comes back to you if you continue to give all of the power to the um, dogma or to that system mm -hmm. or tool, then, yeah, you're, it's going to limit you because it is it's lim it's a limit. It's a, something that's limited. It's created by someone's limited perspective. And mm -hmm. it, but it's a, it, like I agree with you. It's a really good framework. The part mm -hmm. that I think can be also limiting is the ever identification of I am, you know, <laughs> an alcoholic, an alcohol, yeah, because your mind believes anything after I am, it mm -hmm. believes it, and you are you're identifying it. And I understand the point of that is to remind yourself of that so that you don't because you're you have a, a, a there's a, a chemical thing and there's a there's a keeps there's you a, from being in denial. It keeps you from being in denial about your issue. And yeah. yeah, exactly. And then just saying, well, I can you know engage and mm -hmm. I can do that again. So I understand the, but still there is there's a shadow side of what that can mean. The, the what you place after I am, is you identify with it and your mind believes it. So yeah, I am an alcoholic. I'm an I'm an addict. Those are that's disempowering, like you like you were saying. So but again. I think it's a wonderful place to start. So many people find healing in it, but just to remember mm -hmm. that when you've worked them and you really have gotten to a place of um, bet of healedness to a certain degree, that mm -hmm. it's good to start doing some other stuff too, wouldn't you say? Move, yeah, definitely. You move can up step away from that. I really like what you were saying. You know, it's it's this idea of pick and choose, and we really um, at this day and age, there's so much information out there. There's so many different uh, paths that we can take. There's so many dogmas, but there's so much, there's so many jewels in all of these different paths. And we really have the opportunity now, especially with the internet and all this information to, to really search around and pick and choose from many different, um, different ways and traditions and use what works best for us. But it can be a, an amazing, tremendous jump off point. Definitely. The, um, the, uh, the AA and, and NA and I, and I'm very grateful for what came through it for me. That's great. 
Mm-hmm. What is, so what is your, I, how would you characterize or how would you, uh, how do you help folks in your addiction counseling? What is it? A, it's a coaching sort of situation. Is that the model kind of? Yeah, typically, typically I work with people either in person or over the phone. But um, what I really work with them on is, um, you know, deep core beliefs and, um, and, and emotional traumas that have led to um, the cyclical pattern of addiction. Um, a lot of it's very personalized depending on who I'm working with, Mm -hmm. but essentially, um, I work with, uh, with foundational philosophical tools that help an individual realize their own potential and their own, um, uh, their own abilities. And I use that kind of as a foundation work. And then I move more into emotional trauma release. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and therefore then after the foundation has been built of, of powering philosophy, then um, when we kind of move the emotions out of the way and they fall back onto that philosophy can become more and more realized into their life. Um, but yeah, I work over the phone and, um, and in person and, uh, and I really like to focus on uh, a big part is health and, um, and vitality because mm-hmm. one of the biggest issues, and this was another you know, issue I, I found pretty common um, in the 12 step circles was there's so much, you know, coffee, cigarettes, kind of sw- the addiction swapping there, yeah. not in all of it, but in a lot of it. When what I found myself is that one of the most important things about detoxing, about um, coming into a new way of being and really being able to support a higher vibration in your life is supporting it in your physiology Mm -hmm. and through diet exercise and, um, in conscious lifestyle, we really give, um, give ourselves the biological foundation to house a higher vibration and bring more light into us. And, you know, if we're running around eating fast food and smoking cigarettes, we're not really giving ourselves the opportunity to step into a greater expression and truly transform. So a lot of it, I actually focus on, on how to uh, transition to a healthier lifestyle as as one of the major foundations for uh, transformation from an ad- addiction to a uh, addiction free living. That's right. Yeah, because the Holy Trinity actually is mind, body, and spirit, mm-hmm. and the, it is it is a, even though that's a Trinity, it's a, actually a singularity, and one affects the other. Mm-hmm. So if if you are um, ex- yeah. It, it's interesting. I actually see it because I work with a lot of highly sensitive people, empathic nature and stuff like that. And uh, we have to work on their emotional body and their emotional body when it is functioning inaccurately, when it's turned in upon itself. It's basically like an autoimmune disease because mm-hmm. that feeling that people who are highly empathic, they feel like they're absorbing everything and they feel like they feel victimized by it. It's really like their emotional body has an autoimmune disease. And then a lot of times those people literally have autoimmune diseases in their physical body. And autoimmune mm-hmm. disease is where your body attacks itself and it's not supposed to do that. So, um, and then the mind, you know, the mind is affected by the body is affected by the spirit, you know, so, um, you have to focus. I I agree. That's something that can be overlooked. I think that the 12 steps is working on some, on the spiritual and the mind, which is great, but there's a piece missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very cyclical. The mind, the body, the body feeds the mind, you know, you are what you eat is the vibrations we bring into our bodies affect the, the quality of our thinking. Yes. And the quality of our thinking affects the health of our physiology. So it's really a cyclical, um, uh, a cyclical relationship between the two, and they need to be taken that way. I completely agree. By the way, we are taking calls. I don't think I even mentioned that. 323-524-2599. And we do have a caller. Patrick, would you be cool if we took a call? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Great, let's go. Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? Hi, my name's Stacy. Stacy, how are you? Good. How are you? Great, great. So fun to talk to you. I've been listening to your your shows for a while. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And we have Patrick Hayes on with us as well. Nice to meet you, Patrick. Hey, good to meet you, Stacy. Welcome. <laughs> What's going on today, Stacy? Oh, no, I just I was listening to some of the show, and I thought I'd give a call. Um, just going through a huge transition in my life, and just looking to see if you guys see anything for the future. I've been trying to study a lot, and sorry, that's my daughter. Um, just studying a lot, and uh, you know, trying to find my purpose. 
Okay, great. Well, I, studying is wonderful. I think that um, what I'm hearing is to go ahead and give yourself permission to be uh, to to be one who has arrived, to be in the place of being powerful and being you are you're studying, but you're also capable of being a teacher. You are a teacher. And when I say capable of being a teacher is because that's where the energy is right now is the waiting, almost like the waiting to exhale, that um, you can go ahead and start believing and um, vibrating to that, even though the physical, the now the, you know, it hasn't manifested as such, but the pre-manifestation of it is to connect with the energy of it and to know that you know your power. I feel like you do need to, to be taking care of yourself a little bit more, too. It's more about time. It's more about um, sacrificing yourself for others. Um, does that is that true? Do you do you resonate with that? Yeah. 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 I'm trying, trying my best to meditate more and you know, yeah. more time for myself to go out for a walk in the park. Or, That's great. Um, just being with my daughter, and you know, she she's got a she's got a good vibe herself. So it's just it's fun hanging out with her. And then sometimes, you know, I just go off on my own and go to spiritual meetings in my area and just oh, trying to be with people. You know, go through some things. Like that. That's great. That's great. Well, again, I, I really feel like there is power that you are are um, just not identifying with right now. That you are ready to do to have. To connect with your purpose, you don't need to find your purpose. You you are your purpose. Your purpose is right there, and um, if, I think maybe some conscious like affirmation kind of kind of practice, that kind of control meditation, where like basically affirmations and, and identifying with that role that that higher purpose. Because I can feel it. I can feel how much you have. You're so compassionate. You have this really powerful gift of compassion and being very present for others. Um, so again, that we need to be a little more present for yourself, which I, I like that you're doing that. I think that if you spend more, I, we want it to be every single day though, because when you withdraw your consciousness from this plane in sleep, we want to start it in the morning again and, uh, start, start with some time. Okay. Yeah. With your, in your own native land. And it's, I, I totally get, you know, spending time with your daughter and celebrating life that way. She's going to raise your vibration cause she's, she's better at it. <laughs> she's closer to undi- mm-hmm. unconditional it's love. It's really interesting. It's interesting you say that because because she does raise my vibration and it seems like she raises vibrations for us too. Oh, like I just yeah. uh, absolutely a party for a friend for. of mine her daughter's birthday and everyone was just drawn to us. Like I had like ten people come up to me instantly and they're like just in awe of her and Aww. you know it was just kind of nice to see her bring that out in others and make make them smile and that sort of. Thing. And funny. I guess that's maybe that's what I want to do eventually when I. When I figure out, you know, exactly. I know I have a higher purpose. I'm just trying to figure out what that is. Yeah. yeah. Patrick, you know, go ahead. Yeah. 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 So I heard you mentioning yeah, yeah, earlier also that you're, it's the purpose. You're kind of searching for purpose. Is that, is that correct? You're, you like, you feel something coming yeah. and bubbling in you, but you're not sure exactly where to put I've, your energy. Yeah. I've always felt that I'm like, oh, well, maybe it's in my career. And I'm, and I, I got the career I wanted. And I'm like, there's, there's more here. I just, I trying to, you know, there's right. something brewing, and I'm just trying right. to like, you know, dabble into it. Well, I well, you know, you know, a really good uh, tool that I use when I'm working with people um, to to help them kind of tune into um, what, in a sense, their soul mission is is um, is based off of the understanding that um, typically what keeps people from finding what their passion is is some sort of wounding that is that has happened in the lower three chakras. Um, so wounding that uh, creates a, a sense of fear that there is not uh, there is not a level of safety that is sufficient and also or maybe not enough money. So uh, survive, you know, on the basic lower chakra survival. So the fear of not being safe or having enough finances. The second wounding or fear would be of not being accepted by other people or not feeling like we are valuable as human beings. And the third one being um, feeling disempowered, like we don't have the power to actually achieve, um, you know, something that we may feel the aspirations to to do. So um, I like to ask a question to people um, that maybe can help clarify uh, what their mission is. And that is, um, if you knew that you were completely safe and that you would be financially supported, no matter what you did, 
You also knew that you'd be loved by the people around you and that you had a very strong, tangible value to offer other people. And you also knew that you were empowered enough that whatever you chose to do, you would 100% be successful at what you were doing. Then ask yourself what you would do at that point. And by doing that, you're basically, um, you're, you're tuning into a space within your own consciousness that would have naturally arised had you have grown up in a more utopian environment in which those three foundational uh, human needs were already met. Because typically at this time, I mean, people are running around just trying to make money, just trying to be accepted or just trying to be powerful. And that comes out in a lot of perverted expressions. So if you can really tune into yourself and ask yourself what you would do if all three of those foundational uh, requirements were already met, that can bring a lot of clarity to what your soul really wants to do in this world and how it wants to express. That's great. And it's so weird that you mentioned the chakra thing because that's, I had some Reiki done maybe about a year ago well, before my daughter was was even thought of. And I my my friend did it and she said, oh, your chakras are open. It's just your solar plexus was, you know, and she didn't know at the time I was having digestive issues. And when I had my daughter in all through the pregnancy, I didn't have any digestive issues. I'm, I'm holding up to diet. Stacey, I'm holding up to the camera right now. I wrote down solar plexus. Mm. Oh, my God. So, and when she didn't even know that I was having health issues at all, she just said, yeah, I felt like a blockage. Like, and I was, just, I was just kind of freaking out inside because I got diagnosed with that diagnosis. So, um, but since I've had my daughter, I haven't had any health issues since then. So I just, I, you know, laughingly say, oh, my daughter cured me. But um, even after she was born, she's nine months old now. I don't have any digestive issues, but the whole chakra thing with the financial, and I guess you get your right. I don't know if, if I want to do and the whole finance aspect of it and trusting that it would be okay, you know, like. Well, that's how we start to connect with it right now. (laughs) Yeah. If if you get in that space, if everything were all the needs were met and I was and then and you can start to just get the feeling. Sometimes the feeling is all you need to do and lean into the feelings of it. And it could be, you, you know, don't judge the answers that people don't do that. And there's no way for me to have that job. We just want to go ahead and keep those that lower mind chatter at bay. And the feeling of it, if if it's I, the feeling is I love talking to people, counseling them, and helping them. Then just move into that feeling deeper and, and have that practice every day. Kind of like what I, when I was saying affirmations, and what Patrick is is uh, giving you is basically like a framework to do a conscious envisioning or a conscious feeling into that purpose. Give yourself that space every single morning, to where it is a fun practice. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. That's okay, sweetheart. Go ahead. I, it's just really weird that you guys talk stuff because it's already like this stuff has already happened to me and just kind of, I feel like I'm supposed to counsel people. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm trying to gain all the knowledge I can. And, yeah. you know, my, my mom has told me that, you know, on my mom's side that, you know, her family has a lot of intuitive abilities and then. I just saw a cousin on Facebook that told me that on my dad's side that she comes from a long line of intuitive. She's a psychic medium, and it's like, I feel like I, I might be capable of these abilities. I guess I'm just that fear yeah. that I might not be able to help other people with my possible abilities. Oh, well, again, that feels very solar plexus oriented. And I would, I would oh. recommend some I am affirmations like we started the show with. I am connected to infinite intelligence. I am powerful. I am a child of the universe, and therefore I am inseparable from the universe. And therefore I am uh, connected to um, natural healing power. And I am a channel for light. I am a channel for divine. These kinds of things to remind you that you don't have to go around and scramble and and um, collect all of the knowledge and stock it up in a library so you have proof that you are a counselor of love and light. It's really about being con- just being open to the connection and being a willing channel is what it's about. Yeah. Do, I, I think that both of those, that conscious envisioning, go back and write down what Patrick said and then do some of those I am affirmations in the morning. 
But you, yeah, you've got a lot of, you've got a lot of light and you've got a lot of the presence that you bring. I can feel that Patrick, can't you feel that the presence that she brings? Mm, Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's powerful. That's what I wanted to say is that it was that what you have is already enough. Mm -hmm. Your story, what you've been through is enough and it doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, woven into something grandiose or flashy, but simply telling your story and what you've been through not only can that be a greater healing for yourself, but you'd be surprised how many people you can help just by sharing your story. Yeah. Well, well, Stacy, thank you so much for calling in today. And really, um, you know, thank you. you, you've arrived and you're ready. You're ready. Thank you so much for, for your, for sharing your light on the show and in the world. Appreciate you. Well, thank you, Trish Hi. and Patrick. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for calling in. Yeah, that was great. You know, um, talking about sharing your story, um, I don't share it on this show that much, but because I don't like, it's interesting, you know, when we share our story, we we don't want to resonate, vibrate to it either, you know, the the past, but sometimes, Mm -hmm. like you say, it's very helpful for people to know. I, I think I did share a little bit of my story when my father passed. My father um, was an alcoholic and um, he, also very violent. And we, we had a very, our home was violent. He beat my mother and also had, you know, was pretty violent with at least one of my sisters, if not all of them. And, you know, that's that's where I come from. And I was, after that, I even had, the after we left my father, there was kind of a greater challenge with the next iteration of, of family that I had, that for me personally. So um, I... Even though I wasn't technically homeless, I well I almost was. I mean, when I was in my early twenties, um, my I was a sort of rabid codependent, and you know the the kind of empath who was completely I didn't know that word obvious maybe not obviously but I didn't know that word, and I was extremely wounded and extremely sick in my emotional body and not really able to function very well. And so I just wanted to share that that um my hero's journey i guess <laughs> a little bit just to touch mm-hmm. upon it because i feel really good about talking about it right now i don't feel that i am uh, vibrating to it i feel like mm-hmm. i'm extremely grateful for it because transformation is really a work of alchemy and taking mm-hmm. that turn and turning it into gold and allowing it to become gold your story those parts of your story yeah you know and, it, and i i completely agree thank you for sharing your story you know i think it's so potent because we're in an age of of building bridges is like i i like to explain it and um each one of us has come from some sort of different hardship you know we've had to blossom through you know some sort of different um different circumstance and through sharing our stories it, we're actually building bridges to mm-hmm. other people that may be in similar situations that we came from. Mm-hmm. So this is why I feel like it's so important for us to share our story while at the same time, as you've been mentioning, not getting stuck in our story. Mm-hmm. So in a sense, um, you know, if, if we have to even vibrate there to resonate with somebody, but we're not afraid of that vibration because we've been there and we know how to leave. So we can then take them by the hand and walk across that bridge. Right. So, um, so, but it's, but it's, you know, it's really powerful to be able to share our stories because there's many people on in different walks of life that, you know, if you, if you're, if you don't know how to, to really speak from experience on certain things, if I'm working with a drug addict and I've never been there before, I can't really get in there with them because mm-hmm. I don't know how to speak that language. I don't really know what I'm talking about. So all of the pain and discomfort that we've come overcome in our lives actually become our greatest gifts for healing others because it's our ability to be able to resonate with other people and then show them a doorway to something higher. Right. Stand in that gap. Stand in that gap between where exactly. and, and if they yeah. know that you've been there, then you are a living example of it. And so they believe it for themselves. And that's the beauty mm-hmm. of the journey. We we have another caller. We're gonna take another caller, Patrick. Yeah. Great. Good. Almost. Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? Hello. Hi, my name's Ashley. Hi, Ashley. We have Patrick Hayes on hey, with Ashley. us as well. Hi, Ashley. Hello. Um, I was wondering, I recently did the QHHT therapy a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. and my higher self just did not 
my ego was too strong. And ever since then, I've just been really struggling. I feel like there's an internal battle. And I'm not sure how to, how, what do I need to do next? Okay. So I just want to let everyone know uh, QHHT is quantum healing hypnosis hypnosis technique. And it was something that was a technique developed by um, Dolores Cannon, who is an author. Um, was, she's passed now, and um, uh, an author in addition to being a hypnotherapist and uh, really brought through a lot of powerful work in, in how we understand the universe. Um, some of her books are called The Convoluted Universe. I believe that's what it is. She has like a series of that. Have you? Yeah. Are you familiar with her work, Patrick? Um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm familiar with that book, The Convoluted Universe. I have that somewhere on a bookshelf. I think I fingered through it. Yeah. Um, I know Dolores Cannon too. Right, of course. Um, do you? Um, okay, Ashley. So you said what? Now you're you're saying that your higher self was what? I didn't understand that. With the QHHT. Sorry, it didn't. It didn't come through. It was just trying to, but my ego was too strong, um, and so the session. I, did, I didn't feel like I got what I was supposed to out of the session, and now I just feel like my insides are they're fighting something, and I don't know how to calm it down or what to do next. Okay. Well, I think we just, again, we need to bring in some presence because there's a bit of um, what's supposed to have happened. That's a non-present thing. And then also what did happen with that, the, you know, the actual therapy session, the tech, the, the hypnosis session didn't work. And so um, when we have a lot of efforting, when we're trying really hard, then we're really just not being present and present, the pres presence, the now is actually where, source energy is where the universe is where god is it's and by the way it is where your higher self is your higher self is just god essence it is the um, expression of source energy so just focus i think just focusing on um, some daily meditation and being very present just breathing for 10 minutes and not really trying to do anything because we want to just be with the i am i am is a big part of today's show the i am which is just the the yeah. higher self the eternal you it is impossible for you to be separated or not connected or not an expression of and not channeling and not a perfect uh, vessel of your higher self. That is what you are. And so um, being able to be in that space and accept that because right now you're vibrating to I'm separated from it. I didn't happen. You see what I mean? That's actually how this universe right. works is you're, you're identifying with it didn't happen. I don't know what to do. So let's see. You can even just start with something very simple. Like Patrick was saying, he works with his um, in his addiction counseling that he works with the physical body and helping people to have healthier physical habits. Well, in this situation, the physical habit that you can easily start to work on is simply what you say with your mouth, the words that you say, because that is the physical manifestation. That is the physical aspect of your thinking and your spirit um, state. Does that make sense? So it's kind of easy. It, it, yes. Does. If you have the thought, then yeah, you're vibrating to that. But if you go ahead and you say it, then you've manifested it all the way. That is the physical expression of it. So we could start there. We could just back up right there and start trying to think of, catch yourself when you say, I didn't connect with my higher self and I don't know what to do. But try to catch yourself before you say that and say, I am my higher self. I always know what to do. And go ahead and just say that. Even if you, you're saying it to someone, you could just go, oh, that's, I just said that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you could obviously say that to us and we wouldn't <laughs> think you were crazy. So anytime you can just start there. And even when I just said that, I was like, ooh, that's true because I believe in the limitlessness of the universe and so therefore I'm connected to the universe because I am uh, you know I am I just am the universe with everybody else so right. um, you can just start doing that and that'll back up that'll kind of do some back-end work retroact into back into the beliefs back into the thoughts back into the feelings <laughs> that's a simple thing you could do right in this moment Patrick what do you think yeah, I, th I think to add to that, I think she's right on. I mean, when we can start speaking our higher truths to ourselves, you know, it may not feel real in the moment that we're saying it the first few times, but as we continue doing it with the with a genuine intention to bring the feeling through of what it really feels like to know that we are powerful, to know that we're connected, the more and more we tell ourselves that, the more believable it becomes and tell the next thing we know, we are really truly vibrating it at the at the frequency of the statement that we that we've said to ourselves, you know, and um, and then really powerfully what happens is that the more that we can get into that knowing state of feeling empowered, 
whether it's just in a meditation at night or feeling connected, whether it's just in a meditation at night or whether it's in the morning before we get started the day, the more we can come into that space and get to know what that space feels like. I mean, it's going to fluctuate and we're going to move in and out. But the more we understand and make that connection, it creates a really open bridge or doorway to that higher expression of who we are. And then when we're feeling like we're going through trouble, we can kind of um, we can bring that higher self version of ourselves to help counsel our lower self through the situation. So I found personally it's, it was really helpful not to, in a sense, um, just kind of shut my lower self up like uh, like like you're locking a kid in the basement, but actually treat him more like a counselor would treat a wounded child. And so what I would do is spend a lot of time uh, embodying the higher vibrations in meditative states and coming into these greater uh, states of being. And then when I found that the, the my lower self was acting up, I, I had a point of reference and I could call upon my higher self and then have kind of like a, um, a split personality counseling session mm -hmm. in which my higher self would hold space for my lower self. And, and once you can start bringing your higher self into the dialogue when you're kind of stressed out or, or flipping out inside your head, the whole dynamic shifts because what you'll notice is that more and more often you're playing the counselor role as opposed to the victim role or the stressed out role. And then eventually you just start being the counselor all the time. You mm -hmm. start just being your higher self. So it's a, it's, that's kind of like a, an idea of the bridge process of how you can kind of unite this higher self version with, um, you know, the illusory self that's still searching for a greater expression. That's, that's great, Patrick. That's exactly um, how I talk about the lower self or slash the ego. Basically, it almost quite literally is a frightened child because the preponderance of that ego lower mind expression was developed before age 12. And so mm -hmm. what would you do? Like you say, you wouldn't, if, if in literal terms, if you had a frightened child who was saying, where are we going? I'm scared. You wouldn't lock him in the basement or cut him out, kick him out of the car. You would say, mm -hmm. What is it, sweetheart? Okay, no, you. I understand. Thank you so much for letting me know where you are. But I trust me, I got this. We got this. And you can, the I who has this, because we, we are allowed in this duality experience to go ahead and place that I in the faith of, the, of source energy. Sometimes we have to let it come back to the power of us. But you can go ahead and say... I, I'm, I'm trusting in source energy who loves me, who created me, of which I am a perfect expression. And we get to do that, too. So does that sound good, Ashley? That sounds perfect. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank mm. you so much for calling in. And Thank you, Ashley. We'll talk to you another time. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Bye-bye. We're just about out of time. So, Patrick, we are going to do two things. I want you to please tell everyone how they can get in touch with you. And then we're going to end the show with one of Patrick's songs. And there is, you're going to, I want you to tell them about that, too. Okay, yeah. So uh, you can find me real simple, Patrick Hayes. That's my name. Patrick, H-A-I-Z-E dot com is my website. Um, you can also find me on YouTube. That's YouTube.com double backslash Patrick Hayes live. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. So that's Instagram back, backslash Patrick Hayes. And um, you can, I have a, a this song that we're going to be playing right here. Actually, I'm releasing a music video for it on the 8-8 portal. So you can keep your eyes open for that. I'll be putting it on my YouTube channel and on, I'll be launching it on Facebook and I'll also be putting it on my website. So you can let, check out for this song. Um, so this song right here is essentially... Um, it's it's framed from the perspective of uh, from a past experience in which a higher self version of me. Funny enough, yeah, my higher self came and visited me. Oh, cool. This is synchronistic with this last call. Came and visited me in 2011, and um, and needless to say, it was a very transformational experience. Um, but this song is actually um, a representation of that experience. And it kind of takes um, the beginning of the experience through the integration and then the dialogue between my higher self and me, empowering me to step into what my gifts are and what my goals are um, and my higher expression is. And so this also acts as a catalyst for anybody else that listens to it to kind of uh, ride that frequency bandwidth of, of connecting with your higher self and having that empowerment. Um, on our daily path. So it's a great tool to listen to in the morning to get yourself hyped, to get yourself ready and, um, and, and to find your mission in the world. 
Thank you so much, Patrick. Well, y'all stick around and listen to this. Patrick, thank you so much for being on the show today. And everyone, I hope you will join me again next week at 11 a.m. Pacific. And thank you for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. I create my own reality though I don't control it I have just enough control to lose myself into the moment As I let the moment flow I don't know where this road ends But I know that I'm going to where I'm supposed to be going Cause I create my own reality No, I don't control it I have just enough control to lose myself into the moment As I let the moment flow I don't know where I'm going But I know that I'm gonna be where I'm supposed to be The future's talking to me I can hear the echoes call Falling through the canyons I can see my truth laughing back at me His beauty glances I can feel the ceiling Expanding by the second And the music is a tool I use For blooming my reflection I'm a drifter of dimensions Innovating my expression As the ever-changing basis Of my scintillating essence I live for the epiphanies Contradicting my pretenses And embrace the ever-changing Unanticipated question I let expectations go And my creations grow Greater than I could ever claim to know before I started to create them Through the ever-changing flow All my trust is in this moment Cause this moment is forever Where eternity is waiting I cooperate with knowing Though I don't know how I know why I do know how it feels, and that's all I need to go by Into the outer realms, past all boundaries My soul flies, astounded by the beauty that's surrounded me my whole life I create my own reality though, I don't control it I have just enough control to lose myself into the moment As I let the moment flow, I don't know where this road ends But I know that I'm going to where I'm supposed to be going As I create my own reality, no, I don't control it I have just enough control to trust myself within the this moment, as I let the moment flow, I don't know where I'm going, but I know that I'm gonna be where I'm supposed to be. I talk to planets in my dreams, they speak to me in frequencies of geometric greens, at speeds beyond conception. I've met ascended beings that have presented a reality of balanced inner peace So it's from here I choose to ground and meet this moment with equality Acceptance and neutrality Flowing my expression from the center of this balancing Inventing ways to be that extend to you an alchemy That betters the existence of everything surrounding Each second is infinity expressed in its totality And the essence of divinity is present in the now of each reflection of existence And as we tune into this power the momentum of our bliss embodies heaven through our flowering I create my own reality No, I don't control it I have just enough control to love myself within this moment As I let the moment flow That's when the future spoke to me And that's when the truth spoke through me And it said There's something on this planet that you came to do And by engaging in it It awakens you And you remember that you came into this planet with a purpose And by acting on this dream All humanity is nourished so when you're fully blissful and enthralled in the moment That's the truth signal from God that you've honed in On your soul mission Ride this way beyond the matrix of the mind You are designed to embrace this You must trust in the vibrance that you find in your creative space When you're in this state of grace Your mind reflects sacredness When the fire from inside your heart starts navigating This universe conspires to provide you the way So just remember it's a feeling, not a thought or a concept It's the state of your being that shapes the fate of your dreams And when it's aligned, you'll constantly find Your life is a process designed to define the divine Through your consciousness And when you come alive into your truest godliness The whole universe is blessed with the gifts that you promised us You came here to astonish us You came here to astonish us I am your mirror, I am love The time is now to fly above and find your cloud The final hour's winding down, it's all on us You came here to astonish us You and I, we all are one I'm just the future you, here to prove to you God is us, the now that is this now Exists without limits or barriers It's the moment of soul's recognition Where we meet to share these words I thank you for your presence This has been a blessing and a gift And I'm eager to see the magical expression of your endlessness I create my 
own reality though I don't control it but I have the control to lose myself into the moment As I let the moment flow I now know where this road ends And I know that I'm going to where I'm supposed to be going Cause I create my own reality No, I don't control it but I have the control to trust myself within this moment As I let the moment flow I now know where I'm going And I know that I'm gonna be where I'm supposed to be